something to think about. Just sliding up 200 feet in the Aspens versus backtracking to the trail. trail we're heading up into the area we saw the elk last night we tried to get some footage for you guys but they were so far away we could barely make them out with our binos but it's another beautiful day it's right around freezing this morning and uh we're gonna push up if there's elk we'll hang out if there isn't we'll do something else but we're really looking forward to getting onto some elk so come along thanks for watching by the way we appreciate it that's a big reason why we make these videos we like having the memories, but um, we like sharing them too. So we appreciate you guys watching. Hope you stick around. So let's go make it happen.
Saint Colleen said it. That's a dead bull. just like plop down those 30 yards into an opening or honestly if he just swung right I had a 50 yard lane but he just came down like five or ten and was looking through the trees couldn't see what he needed to see so of course you know now I think well I felt like it was my last chance but it was my last chance there maybe we should have just waited but at the same time, I felt like the wind was starting to get shifty. I didn't feel like we had much time anyways. So we'll go hit this knob, throw out another bugle, go from there. And slide back over by this tree. Well, we did think we were here another hunter, but we've heard some real weird sound of bugles. But yeah, as soon as we popped over this knob, there's a hunter standing, I don't know, just a couple hundred yards away. They would have been in his lap if he stayed put, or he would have intercepted him. I mean, sure enough, another 10 minutes, that hunter is right in the middle of everything. So I guess it makes me feel a little bit better about the decision I made instead of trying to be patient. I didn't want another hunter to screw it up. I didn't want the wind to screw it up. I didn't think the bull was going to come any closer on his own. Just call it a fun morning. It's definitely one that we can learn from. It's just weird how things work out. And they were so smelly, so smelly over there. All over the place. Yeah. I can see that too. It's crazy. Did you hear the clunking? Yes. Yeah, that was a phenomenal experience. And just for the record, I know. I know I've complained about hunters. I don't mind this guy's mm -hmm. up here at all. No. At all. Good on him. Yeah. He came up one side, we came up the other. Mm -hmm. That's all good. We're not gonna like go we're not gonna go that way and interfere with this hunt, but we'll sit here and just in case he bumps them back this way. If that happens, they're fair game. Otherwise we'll figure out what our next move is. But that was a fun morning. That's what elk hunting is all about. And when I was hiking up the sun was just cresting the ridge and cows were walking through the sun. It was amazing. Like their little fuzzy butts. You could see the little butt whiskers in the sun. But it's like we've, we've seen, we've watched elk from a distance so much. There's always a squirrely cow that like runs outside the group, right? And the bull goes and gets her. Fuck, not this time. They're like in the lunch line, <laughs> just going. All we needed was for him to just swing wide or a cow to swing wide and him to go get her. So we'll call it a fun morning and hope that we can get back on him in a little bit. I've been sitting here snacking, resting, watching, listening. Haven't seen or heard any elk. We're gonna try and get a bugle. closer to where we bumped him. And we thought we'd look on this ridge for tracks. We, we got some, definitely. So we're gonna follow these tracks as far as we can. All right, we've been tracking them for, for two or 300 yards probably. Right down an area, it makes sense for them to go. It's steep and they do what they want. Listening, 
I'm waiting to see if the wind will stabilize. Uh, we've been sitting here an hour and a half. We're gonna keep tracking them out. Try and find them. Sliding up 200 feet in the aspens versus backtracking to the trail. Terrible. I don't know if we told you earlier, but the reason we started calling is kind of twofold. We lost their track in some grassy aspen stuff. And we felt like we weren't gonna get anywhere. We wanted to locate, didn't get a response. But when Alicia heard them, it sounded like they were higher up on the mountain. And we know there's water up here where we were this morning. And we also know it's not uncommon for the elk and deer to kind of double back. And so everything was kind of pointing that way. So we came back up to the top. So yes, we climbed up here this morning, went down the side of the mountain, Came back up the mountain, it was terrible. And then hit the trail the last couple hundred feet. So we're up in the area where we first heard them this morning. We can glass a little bit of country, but I think acoustics are pretty good here. See if we hear anything. If not, we're gonna bomb down the trail and go see if we can glass something up for tonight or tomorrow. Well. Elk about 17 miles and 3,000 feet up there. Not the same elk. Um, it's quiet here. Bugled a couple times. No answers. So we're gonna bomb down the trail. See if we can go find some elk somewhere else. My wife is a badass. <laughs> Well, we made it back to the truck, drove out to a good glass and spot where we can see the area we just were and a bunch of areas around it. And I just picked up a really nice six point up on the ridge where we were this morning and just now. I mean, he's walking right where we sat for two hours. Well, we drove to the Next closest glassing point, hop out of the truck and immediately spot elk. I thought I saw a bull up there, but now that I have the spotter out, I'm just seeing a cow, but there's at least three elk and I can only see that cow right now, so I'm waiting for. 